Welcome to our spoiler-free review of the latest Coded Chronicles game, which is based on the Goonies 80s classic. Before we start, a quick shout out and a thanks to the op for sending us a review copy of this escape room in a box style game. The Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff, a Coded Chronicles game. Yes, that's the full name, and perhaps the game with the longest name in my collection right now, was designed by Jay Cormier and Sen Foon Lim, the same team that brought us the last Coded Chronicles game, as well as other great games like Junk Art and our favorite party game, but wait, there's more. This latest Escape Room in a Box experience from Jay and Sen was published by The Op in late 2021. It can be played with as few as one player and as many players as you want to squeeze around the table. While the game can be played in one long sitting, it's also designed to be split over two or three sessions with a built-in save system between the game's three different acts. Now, this cooperative puzzle game has a very reasonable MSRP of $29.99 US. Now, this is a step up from the previous Coded Chronicle games, mm -hmm. which only had one break in the middle of two acts. So pretty much as expected, The Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff follows the plot of the original 1985 Spielberg and Columbus classic, The Goonies. Note, you don't have to know the original movie or well, or at all, really, to be able to play this game. But there are some Easter eggs for those who do know the film. In this Escape Room in a Box style game, you take on the role of the Goonies who are searching for One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff. You do this by using various character skills to interact with the growing map and items you find while exploring. Be careful though, the Fratellis are hot on your trail, and if you make too many mistakes or take too long, you could get caught. For a spoiler-free look at the stuff you get in the box, I invite you to check out our Goonies unboxing video on YouTube. Now, while recording that video, I made sure not to open up any of the sealed envelopes, so you don't really get a good look at the components, but you did get a good idea of how much stuff is in the box, and it's quite a lot. Now, I will say here that the component quality is excellent, and there is more physicality to this Coded Chronicles game than the past two, and there's some very neat components that add to that. Now, the card quality is excellent, and I really appreciate the fact this version included a dry erase map that's not only required for puzzle solving, but also acts as a place to make notes while you're playing cool to have that included. Uh, there are a total of eight different character books in this Coded Chronicles game, each of variable thickness, which can be important. Now, due to this number, I would think you probably want to limit your player count to eight at the max. And with any less than that, you're going to have to have more than one person sharing a book, but I don't think that's a problem. Now, note for reasons I don't really want to get into, but you may be able to be able to guess if you've seen the movie, you might be better off with a cap of six players. So the books all contain a variety of content with regards to its quantity. Mm -hmm. It's not a spoiler to say that each person having their own book will lead to a significant imbalance in how much reading is done between people. That is definitely true. Um, whoever has the Mikey book, give it to whoever is most comfortable reading. And I suggest you split up the data and mouth books for reasons, again, I don't want to mention, but pair them up with someone else. You'll, you'll quickly feel just holding a book. You can yes. see this is small. This is big. I mean, well, it's not just that. Uh, there are other reasons. Yeah, no, that's fair. Now, one final note I think is important to stress. Through our entire play of the Goonies, we did not spot any issues with this game in regards to typos, spelling errors, grammatical mistakes, puzzles that didn't work, or missing entries in any of the books. Things that sadly have been a problem with previous Coded Chronicles games. Now, while I know you can't give away too much, can you at least give us an overview of how you go about actually trying to find One-Eyed Willie's rich stuff? So the Goonies box includes a very short adventure guide. You're going to read this first. This introduces the Chronicle Chronicle system, which I'll explain in a bit. Now, this is short enough. There's no problem reading it at the table when you first sit down to play. This is one of those games you can cut the shrink on, sit down and start playing. Now, this book also tells you what should be out on the table when you start playing. Once everyone has an idea of how to play, you're going to divvy up those player books and begin by reading the first entry, which happens to be in Mikey's book, which sets up the entire scenario and gets you to your first puzzle, basically recapping the beginning of the movie. And that's it. Everything else we could possibly say is a spoiler. So hope you enjoy the game. Later. All right. Not really. <laughs>
So from here on in, I mean, we're not spoiling it. This is all in that adventure book. Interacting with the game involves combining the characters' unique skills with numbers on things in play. I realize it sounds a little weird. If you saw it, it makes perfect sense. Now, each character except Data, who has gadgets, has at least one skill. Uh, just as an example, grabbing four random characters, Mouth can decipher things, Brand can pick things up, Andy is using stuff, and Steph can explain things in a way in the annoying way that she does. Now, the way this works mechanically is that every one of these skills has a unique number, and it becomes the first number in a four-digit code with the other three numbers coming from the stuff in play, the maps, the items, the other cards. Um, once you have the full number, you're going to look it up in the appropriate book. The player owning the book reads the entry, and the game will progress, with new cards being added, things changing, telling you to put things in play, move things, and so on. Exactly the same method used in Scooby-Doo and The Shining, though as noted, much more cleanly than some previous mm -hmm. attempts. Now, the use skill... Uh, is a little bit different because it requires two things to be combined to be used. So for example, you might want to use a lighter with those red candles you found. Items that can be combined are represented by one or two digit numbers with the end result, again, leading to a four digit number. So you have the use skill, the one item, the other item. And again, you're going to look it up in the book and read the results. Note, you will find other sources of four digit numbers that you can look up. And some of the characters have other interesting ways to interact with things. But it's important to remember that you need four digits through some method or other to get your entry. Now, while exploring, you also have to worry about those fratellis. Each map card you put into play has one to three circles on it, and you're going to slowly build out the cave system. And there's one fratelli token. Well, the fratelli's token starts on the first circle, and it will advance on the map according to what you've read in the book. Like sometimes it just it advances as part of the story. But also, if you ever try something and that number isn't in the book, that represents wasting time. So you tried to use two items that don't combine together, or you tried to explain something that had no explanation. That sounds kind of strange, but you know what I mean. Something that didn't need explanation that was already obvious. The Fratellis will move up. Also, if you make a mistake in a puzzle, this can also happen. Now, if the Fratellis ever move onto the room where any of your characters happen to be, you're going to note this, and then you're going to take a penalty on your final score. It doesn't end the game. You don't ruin the game. You can't lose, but it is going to be a, a knock against your final scoring at the end. Then the Fratellis are going to reset to the furthest circle in the previous room. And yes, it is possible if you make enough mistakes, they could catch you a couple times in a row. But again, that doesn't end the game. There's no you know character death. There's no dead end here. It's just a matter of not getting as, as cool a score at the end of the game. This timer mechanic is great, as it doesn't mm -hmm. pressure you to act fast, but to act smart. There's no timer making you rush your decisions for each problem, so it's on you if you make the bad ones. Oh, and that's actually a really good point. Now, as for the puzzles themselves, they run the gamut from logic and math puzzles to some interesting physical puzzles requiring you to manipulate objects you're going to find during the game. Now, if you ever do get stuck on a puzzle, there is a hint table in the adventure guide. Now, this is important. Using the first hint on the table for any of the puzzles is not a bad thing. You don't get penalized for it. These first hints are there to make sure you understand what the game is trying to present to you, what it's asking you to do, and make sure you have the right tools on hand to, excuse me, make sure you have the right tools on hand to solve the puzzle. I strongly encourage you to use these as soon as you get stuck. Like if you're at all stuck, just look up that first entry. After that, you're going to have the choice to get further clues, but those will impact your final score. So these first clues are really just to make sure you didn't get completely confused or misled by something mm -hmm. or accidentally get something out of order. The game doesn't want to penalize you for simple misorganization or mistakes. Now, the adventure in Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff is broken into three acts, which I mentioned earlier. They break at logical points in the story. There's an envelope, a big, nice, big one included in the box that you can use at any of these breakpoints to basically save your game. And this is what we did. We split the entire game over three different sessions to be able to, I don't know, draw it out and savor the game and enjoy it so it's just not a one and done experience and it's, it's done and over. Now, when you do finish the adventure and read about the Inferno sailing off into the distance, you can check the back of the adventure book to see your final score. 
we ended up with hey you guys are awesome and if you play the game yourself i would love to know how you scored compared to us the one thing i want to know is how does the movie tie into the game are you just playing through the goonies movie or is there more to it and also does knowing the movie spoil or ruin anything a good question so so first off you don't need to know the movie at all to play this game at all. You could totally start from the beginning and get the entire experience, the entire story right from this game. That said, knowing the movie will give you a bit of help with a couple of the puzzles, but definitely not all of them. Um, we did discover a couple of, I, I think earlier I mentioned them as Easter eggs. So rewards for doing things that happened in the movie that weren't required or called out by the game. What? I'll leave that for you to discover. All right, it's always great when a licensed property cares for those who love it, but doesn't demand you yes. knowing, going knowing it. it. It's some nice bonuses, we'll just say. Now, as for following the plot of the movie, the game does that. That is, you are playing through the Goonies. You are playing through the Goonies almost word for word, pretty much exactly, with the adventure starting once the kids are in the caverns under the Lighthouse Lounge. Yes, there's a bunch to read that gets you to that point, but there isn't really a game before then. It all starts once you're in the caverns. Now, this game recreates classic scenes and will have players reading lines of dialogue verbatim from the movie. No, this isn't like a script. It's not like you're going to read Mikey's part and I'm going to read Rose's part. Whoever book it is will be reading for multiple characters. So you're not doing a whole script thing, which I think would have been neat, but way beyond the scope of this, this particular project. All right, so that's pretty straightforward then, but doesn't that get boring if you're just playing out the movie and you know it already? Well, no, because the game actually does two things to prevent that exact problem. So first off, the puzzles you expect to see from the movie aren't just transported into the game. You're not going to do the same things. I'm going to give you a very small spoiler here in the fact that you are not going to put the map on a keyboard and play the notes at the top of the map. That's not something that's in this game. Yes, that scene is there, but what you're doing in that scene isn't just recreating what they did on screen. Now, second, the game interjected additional scenes, and it did a really good job of this because it basically reads between the lines of the movie and presents new scenes, areas, challenges, map areas to overcome. And I found all of these really fit well with the existing canon. Like there was nothing in the movie where... This room couldn't happen. I almost spoiled something. There, there was no reason that couldn't have been part of the movie that they cut or just you didn't get to see because it happened off screen. And nothing felt out of place. It all felt appropriate to the Goonies. All right. Well, something for everyone then. That's fantastic. Now, finally, it is worth noting because this is an escape room in a box style game. You do not destroy or permanently mark anything or even fold anything while playing Goonies Escape from what I Willie's read stuff. Unlike some other escape room style games, you can reset this and play again, which honestly, I don't think would be that enjoyable because you'd already know the story and solved all the puzzles, but more likely you could pass it on to another Goonies fan. And this has been an ongoing feature of the Coded Chronicles mm -hmm. games, and good to see that that seems to be their goal with the Coded Chronicles system. Well, now that we've got a really good idea of how you play through this escape room in a box, what did you think? of the latest Coded Chronicles game. So this one we did play with the entire family. So it was me, Deanna, both of our kids, as well as the kid's grandmother, Dee's mom. Um, before I get into our thoughts, though, I do want to point that out that we do have a bit of a history with the series of games. So this is actually the third Codical Chron Coded Chronicles. I keep wanting to say Codical. I don't even know where that word's coming from. This is the third Coded Chronicles game we have played. Um, all of them were sent to us by the op and, and as review copies. So we are reviewing all of them. So I want to be clear on that. And I do encourage people to check out our reviews of the previous ones, especially in that description of play, the way the skills interact. If you think that sounds cool, it might be worth checking out. Now, with those previous games, though, we've had some pretty mixed experiences. Now, I still swear Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion was one of the most fun experiences our family had at a board game table ever. It, it's, it's like, it's just fantastic story. Felt like Scooby-Doo, had the Scooby-Doo jokes. And I'll never forget that once my kids figured out that Scooby could actually try to eat, or Shaggy, Shaggy could actually try to eat everything, not just the stuff that was logical to eat, 
though they're still laughing about the fact that uh, that Shaggy tried to eat the maid. I, th- we just had so much fun. Now, that said, while it was a lot of fun, it was not a perfect experience. Due to some editing issues, there were some problems with the game. There was there was a clue we missed that I think most people probably won't miss, but because of that, there was something to do with the reset. It just wasn't perfect, and I don't need to get into detail here. Again, read our Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion review to get the full details on that. The fact is, there is a lot of text in these games. Yeah. Now, The Shining, I'm sorry to say, was honestly a bit of a disaster. Um, There were significant flaws in that game, including a missing entry in one of the books. There was an entry that was duplicated instead of having an entry. And this had us completely stuck to the point that after getting ridiculously frustrated, I sat down and read through almost every entry in every book, completely ruining the experience for me to try to find the proper place to go. And then there were problems with the way some of the puzzles lined up. It just unfortunately had a lot of issues. Again, you can find the details about this in our review. No, well, there are customers reporting that a separate pack that comes with newer purchases, as well as an updated PDF online, it has unfortunately, as of this recording, still not solved all of the issues. And that's specifically to The Shining, or is that both? That's The Shining. I don't. Shining, I, I yeah. didn't check on. I didn't check on Scooby Doo. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and I. I know actually, Jay uh, was involved in a thread saying, "Oh, there's an." In- <laughs> they added a pack. Um, so yeah. this this isn't all on our designers. We 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 really do appreciate all the excellent effort that Jay and Sen are putting into these games. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of people involved in the production of these games. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to point fingers at whose problem it was, but sadly, there were problems. Yeah. Now, here's the good part. Here, here's the, the sunny side. The best thing about this new Coded Chronicles game is we couldn't find any of these problems. Like, none. Zip. Nada. Now, there was one puzzle that was a little fiddly. Um, it, it, I think could have used some tweaking or better description, but everything was there. There, there weren't any errors. Everything worked. If there were any typos or grammatic errors, I completely missed them. So far, this is definitely the most polished Coded Chronicles game by far. And what I love about that is that means that I now can have hope for the future of the system. I admit, after The Shining, I was like, oh, I hope they didn't mess up the Goonies because I like the Goonies. And I'm glad that that this seemed to work. And I really do hope this does lead to more well-edited and play-tested Coded Chronicles games. Yeah, I think there were a number of missteps made in the system and I don't think any one party is to blame, as we were saying, yeah. for these earlier issues. But it is great to see that they're hitting their stride mm-hmm. now. And we hope that that means even more Coded Chronicles goodness to follow. Yeah, there was a thread on Twitter today talking about having a Mission Impossible version. I would love to see that. Jay and Sen and the op, come on, get to the table. Now, speaking of Coded Chronicles, right? We keep calling it Coded Chronicles game. That's because all of these games share the same basic system, and it's a brilliant system. The system of combining single-digit character skills with numbers in play in order to get you a passage entry in a book to look up is just brilliant. What I really liked about this one is you have way more characters and skills than ever before. Because Scooby, you only had the Scooby game. The Shining, you only had two characters with two skills each. There are way more options here, way more, way more different things you can read. And similar to Scooby, this one seems to be done so that it doesn't penalize you for playing around. Like there is no reason for Steph to, to explain everything or for you to try to use every possible combination of things or for you to examine with Mikey every number you see in the game. I really appreciate that So because it lets you play around. It makes the game feel more open and free. And this is a comedy movie, after all. Yes. So have fun with it. And I will admit, many of the entries, especially the ones that don't progress the plot, are generally added for comedic reasons. Now, another place this new Coded Chronicle game sticks out is the component quality and quantity. Um, The puzzles in the set were more physical and even included some cool 3D elements. Um, Your map's a little less flat. There is one very odd choice made, though, that that I found just strikingly weird is the fact that characters aren't represented by standees, but are just cardboard flat tiles. And I don't know why they decided to get rid of the stands this time. 
Like, it, mean, to me, it's really weird. Yeah, I, I would guess budget, but it's hard to say. It's possible even that they discovered that the tiles might work easier lining up the numbers to make the four I, digit. It is true, but like, you know what? Like, your first couple rooms, you're going to get a kick out of putting your character next to the table to read the number. But after that, you're just, what's the number? 386. And who's got book four? Like, I, I don't know, I guess. Uh, what I will say is it's better for streaming. If anyone's going to live stream this, it is definitely better for streaming because the standees didn't show up. Now, as for the puzzles, uh, they were all rather clever, um, some of which we got like instantly. You just look at it and go, yeah, I can tell what this is going to have me do. And others took us quite some time. Um, one took a significant amount of time. Now, there was one puzzle that we solved in a way that wasn't the proper way. It's not what was expected by the actual game. And then there was another puzzle where you had to physically manipulate components in a certain way. And we were having a hard time manipulating them as they expected you to. Now, in the first case, with the, the puzzle we solved, but not the way they wanted us to, didn't matter, right? We got the re result. That's all that mattered. We didn't go about it the way they wanted to. I actually looked up the clue when we got it to go, okay, how did they expect you to figure this out instead of how we did? But both worked. That's fine. Now, as for the second, we actually up, ended up ignoring a wrong answer penalty. Because we were trying to do the right thing and we got the puzzle and we were doing it properly, but we were getting the end result because of some fiddliness. So we didn't count that as a mark against us. Well, there are few puzzle games in the world that can accommodate any variety of approaches, you know, or every mm -hmm. variety of approaches to it. Now, as noted above, again, I'm going to reiterate this because this is my biggest pro tip. If you're going to buy this game, use those hints. There's no reason not to use the first hint for any puzzle you get even a little bit stuck on. If you don't look at it and immediately at least know what you should be working on or what you should be looking at or where you should be drawing things, be like, I don't know what to do. Grab that book. Look it up. Over the entire game, there was only one puzzle where we actually ended up using the second hint. And that is actually why we didn't get a perfect score, which is where I want to know if you do better than us. See if someone did get through without having to use a hint. And there you go. There's also a question of investment. Is getting a perfect score worth the time and stress of not taking that second clue once in a while and fighting through and, and dig, you know, mm -hmm. only your group can answer that for your playthrough. Yeah, that's something that comes up in all of these games with clues and hints. And it's like, I, I get it. There's this like, I, I'm going to do it without clues. But once that starts impacting your fun, once, you know, one of your kids starts wandering away saying I'm bored and lays down on the floor with the dog, which is kind of what happened, you realize, okay, maybe we should get the clue and keep things moving. Now, before I get to my final thoughts, I do want to mention playtime. Uh, I have no idea who put the Board Game Geek entry in here. Uh, it says like 60 minutes. I'm thinking they might mean per chapter because this is a much more involved, longer escape room experience than the previous two games. Now, honestly, this is something I appreciate. Like, and this gives us more game and more playtime and, and like more bang for your buck. Yes, I know we got a review copy, but still, I could tell I'd, I'd be happier. The, the money spent, I, you're getting more game than you did in the previous games. And like I said, we took advantage of this three act structure to actually spread our game over three different sessions. And I am really glad we did. And I recommend doing the same just to make like then you get three fun game nights out of it instead of one. One caveat, though, the second act is oddly much shorter than the other two. And the last act is significantly longer than the first two. So take that into account when planning your game nights. If you do consider making it a two night thing, what I would suggest is do act one and two, excuse me. What I would suggest doing act one and two, one night, and then saving the third act for another day. And personally, I cannot see wanting to do this entire game in one setting. That would just be, it'd be too long. The save function here works great. So take advantage of it, use it. Yeah, it's very good to know. It would be easy to expect three similar lengths and get yourself into some scheduling trouble in that at that. So overall, The Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willies, Rich Stuff, a coded Chronicles game, was a great experience. Well, I admit it, it wasn't the laugh out loud fun whimsy that Scooby-Doo Coded Chronicles had. We found this to be more engaging and rewarding. I think this was more fun for the adults than it was for the kids. Not that my kids didn't enjoy it, but they would have much rather had the Scooby-Doo experience, which honestly I think makes sense because this game is targeted at the nostalgia crowd. This is designed for older audiences who have a fondness for the Goonies. 
Not a lot of young kids are seeing it for the first time unless they're watching it with their parents. Now, if you're a diehard Goonies fan, you owe it to yourself to pick this one up, play through it. The, the, I honestly can't think of any reason you wouldn't enjoy it. If you're listening to this podcast, you obviously have some experience with hobby board gaming. You're probably going to dig this. This is going to let you experience one of your favorite movies in ways you never could have before. Now, if you're a fan of the Coded Chronicle system and you played through Scooby-Doo and you played through The Shining, um, or you played through them and you liked them, but there were issues, you won't have to find that here. This is the best designed Coded Chronicles game to date. And again, I mentioned this gives me hope for the future of this game line. I'm looking forward to more Coded Chronicles games like The Goonies. Now, if you did cooperative puzzle, escape room in a box style games, you're going to find a lot to like in this box whether you know the movie or not. Though I do admit it's going to be more fun if you're a Goonies fan. Finally, if you don't like puzzles and you don't like the Goonies, thanks for sticking around to the end of this review. I appreciate it. Uh, while I still think there's a chance you might enjoy this, go play a copy with a friend. It's probably not going to be a game for you to pick up for you or your group. Well, that's it for our review of The Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff, a Coded Chronicles game. As Mo said earlier, if you end up playing this game, we'd love to hear your thoughts and how your final score compares to his family's. Tell us all about it in the comments down below. I also invite you to check out the written review over at tabletopbellhop.com, which I think the big thing you may want to see is I'm going to have some pictures of our gameplay nights and I'm going to cover them up. So you're going to have to click to see through. So if you don't want to be spoiled, but that way you can get to see some of the components. And honestly, trust me, I'm not going to solve any puzzles for you, but you get to see some of those cool components and us having fun playing. 